No one cares about men. No one cares about men until your voice is loud and you're important and people listen to you and you have money. No one cares. Unfortunately, and I'm not trying to upset you, when you said, oh, because my dad hasn't died. You mean he hasn't died yet? One of the cornerstones of my success, and I will say it to this day, and I always say it, is... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong! I can't! No, I, don't. I, don't, I, don't, I can't. What's the thing that's hurt you the most? My father dying, obviously. That's, that's a question I didn't have to think about. He died seven and a half, eight years ago now. So Andrew said to me, you're not a man until your father has died. It triggered me a bit because my dad hasn't died. And I think I'm a man, not just biologically. Mm -hmm. I think I tick some boxes. Yeah, for, you know. I'm sure. I wouldn't be sitting here if you weren't. So. Yeah, but it did really get me to think because my dad just turned 80 and he's been f***ing ill for so many years and he's mm -hmm. defied all the odds. But the scariest thought for me is the day my dad goes. That just yeah. scares the s*** out of me. Well, unfortunately... Unfortunately, and I'm not trying to upset you, when you said, oh, because my dad hasn't died. You mean he hasn't died yet? And the natural order of humanity is that he will die before you. So it is going to happen. Sadly, that's just an unfortunate fact of life. You say the same thing about my mother. Well, it should be the order of life. It some, should be. It some should people be. lose when, their and, children. And yeah. when it's not, when the natural order goes in the wrong direction, that is a real tragedy. Being your age and losing your 80-year-old father is sad, but it's not a tragedy. Being your age and losing your 18-year-old son mm. is a tragedy because it shouldn't happen that way. You are a man. And Andrew is also right because the full experience of being a man, let's say being the patriarch and I guess the head of the family with no older generations to look up to, is a part of being a man that you haven't experienced yet. You may have mastered the other 99%, but you can still go to your dad for advice. There's still an older member of your family, and a man in the male lineage above you in seniority who's lived 30, 40 more years than you and knows things you don't and you can go to him. It's kind of a lonely feeling. I mean, I have Andrew, but we're the same age, essentially. It's kind of an isolating feeling at first, but I do get what Andrew says, that you're not a man, not a, let's say not a complete man until your father dies. Because that one little missing part, when you are now the guy, I am now the guy forever. I have no grandfathers left. I have no father left. I am the guy forever that all of my kids and all of their kids will look up to for male guidance. And there's no one I can go to. So it's a very interesting part of manhood that you, God forbid, hopefully in a very long time, when it happens, you'll understand what I, mm. what I just said better. Yeah, I think I probably will. I feel that I will. Yeah. What's your most brutal life lesson? My most brutal life lesson? It's something I've always known. It's not a lesson I learned. But I mean, the fact that me and Andrew wake up and say no one cares about men. No one cares about men until your voice is loud and you're important and people listen to you and you have money. No one cares. Uh, I've, re I've realized that over the course of my teenage years, my early 20s, no one, no one really cares. Your mother cares about you. That's it. Your brother, maybe one or two friends. But no one actually cares about men. Society as a whole doesn't care about men. But it's a brutal life lesson. Right? It is. It yeah. is. And it's a brutal life lesson all you young men need to learn. Because the problem is... You go from being a child to a man. So that's the problem, a lot, you see. A lot of men don't. Yeah. But... Well, yeah, true. <laughs> but it's not like you're born and no one gives a fuck about you besides your mother. You're born and everyone loves you. You're a baby. Oh, you're, you're cute. You're small. You're this. You're 10. You're 11. You're still doing funny things. Everyone wants to interact with you. And slowly, slowly, the attention falls off. I guess, like, in the same way, a woman who's in the prime sexual age of her life, who's super attractive and men are giving attention to, is the same when she gets to, like, 46 and looks around and thinks, what the what? No one actually, what? Where, where's all the attention? I think that happens to all men at some point. You know, when people don't find you funny or cute anymore, and then you're out there and you're working a job and you're making sandwiches and people are being rude to you and you have your stupid red hat on and you're like, what the f am I supposed to do? No one cares. Like, yeah, it's a lesson that hits all of us mm. and we've all been there. But it would be easier if no one cared about you from day one. But you go from being adored yeah, you learn how to, to liked, to tolerated, to completely on your own. And the young men out there who haven't quite reached the no one cares about you stage, trust me. Wait till you're 21. No one cares. <laughs> so good luck. Good luck. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? Moving to Romania. Moving country. You say that's a risk? You've just said what you said about the... I think uh, you're like it's a risk to stay here. Yeah, but when I left uh, eight years ago, things weren't as bad. Right. It wasn't clearly a failed state mm. when I left. And uh, yeah, no... Moving... Why was it a risk? 
it just is. When you uproot every friend you have, it wasn't like I could put my friends on private jets and have them come see me anytime I like. It wasn't. Mm. It wasn't like that. It was like, well, I have this job over in Romania. I'm commentating for this fight show. You know, I at least have an income there. I can use my savings, buy an apartment or two. Let's just see how life goes. All right, screw it. Let's uproot and move. Mm. I guess that was a risk. Paid off. No, yeah, well, I guess so. If you mm. don't count the government trying to put me in jail for no reason, but here's <laughs> what it is. But mm. all in all, I've done pretty well. Mm. What's the best advice you ever received? People don't listen to it enough, but one of the cornerstones of my success, and I will say it to this day, and I always say it, is don't take drugs. I know it sounds stupid, I know it sounds cliche, because back when we were growing up, every celebrity saying don't take drugs, but they all were taking drugs on the side or whatever. <laughs> I don't know why, for some reason, I believed people who said don't take drugs, don't take drugs, and I never took any drugs. And the crazy thing is, because I lived in Luton, where everyone's taking drugs, and I decided to be a kickboxer instead, I can only imagine that that little bit of momentum I had that helped me escape from that horrible place would have been killed with a few joints of marijuana per week. I think it would have. And people tell me I'm wrong. No, it would have made you smarter and made you think in a different way. Maybe you're right. So don't start spamming me with pro-weed stuff. I don't know. But I just look at the lives of a lot of people who I knew back then, who were taking the cocaine, smoking the marijuana. I'm like, your lives are the same. PlayStation 2 is turned to PlayStation 5. But besides that, you're doing the same. Shit. I feel like that one little spark of momentum that me and Andrew had that got us out could have been killed. Yeah. And it terrifies me. So yeah, don't take drugs, I think, is the best advice I've, I've had ever. And yeah. I'm glad I've, I've stuck to it. And then now the pro marijuana people are going to start being like, cigars are a drug, caffeine's a drug. You know what I mean? What's the worst advice you ever remember receiving? Oh, the worst advice is great. The worst advice exists everywhere in the universe and you hear it all the time. The worst advice, I don't know if the people in charge of the world put this out here on purpose, but you see it every single day. Some flowers take longer to bloom. Don't worry, your time will come. Oh, well, dogs have babies five times a year. An elephant calf takes... 20, year, 20 months to gestate because it's greater. So if you're not where you want to be today, don't worry. It's going to happen. Your time's going to come. Your ship's going to come in. That's the worst shit I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's on the internet every day. You're going to start seeing it now. You're going to start seeing it. Enough. It's on the internet everywhere. You just scroll past it. You haven't taken in the bullshit. Just Bro, it's, it it's, it's terrible. Wow. And for any young person to sit there whose life isn't going right, who had a failed relationship, they're 21, working a dead-end job, but to see on the internet, don't worry, some flowers take longer to bloom, you're going to make it one day, your time will come, and God, okay, great, <sighs> sigh of relief, my time will come, the internet said so. If you buy into that, you deserve to be poor forever. Like, panic mode is the best mode to be in. Things aren't quite right. Life sucks. My girlfriend just left me. Can't pay my rent. Panic mode. Fuck the internet. Fuck some flowers take longer to bloom. Fuck it, my time is going to come. Panic. Panic and succeed. That's the worst <laughs> advice I've ever seen. No one's ever, I don't think, given me that advice. But that's certainly the worst advice I've ever seen. Mm. It's up there with all of our graves are the same size and you can't take the Lamborghinis with you. That's just as stupid. You know why that's just as stupid? <laughs> Ready? I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. Me and you go to the world's biggest movie theater, all right? I'm at the front row, front row seats. I've got popcorn, beautiful girl here, beautiful girl here. We all, go, all got ice cold Coca-Colas. i got nacho, i got dips, i got 3D glasses, right? You're sitting right in the back. No snacks, no girls, by yourself. It's cold up there, right? You can barely see the screen, haven't got the 3D glasses. I could be like, oh, this movie's great. I'm really enjoying this movie. If you start screaming from the back of the theater, well, mate, the movie's going to end one day. In a couple hours, the movie's going to end, so it doesn't matter that you, you're doing it that way. I'd turn around and I'd say, you are the biggest jackass I've ever heard of. What about that analogy doesn't apply to that our graves are the same size, can't take the Lambos with you, attitude to life? Oh, so it's going to end one day. So I should, what, be a bum like you? No, it's going to end one day, so I'm going to enjoy the 65, 70 years I have to the absolute fullest, hopefully have, and enjoy every single little aspect that this earth can give me. Go to every single country, meet all the interesting people, sit down with millionaires like Rob Moore, who doesn't want to talk to you because you're a bum. Don't tell me all our graves are the same size. Shut the f*** up.
Gob. Worst advice ever. Yeah. <laughs> They're both equally as stupid. <laughs> What's your biggest... <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I can't. No, I, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> no, I just love your energy about it. That's, yeah. uh, 